welcome back to another episode of the open source cafe today we have way joining us from nebula graph and we're going to talk a lot about uh, graph databases and all things around that and how nebula, nebula graph can help you if you want to learn more about it you can check out the links in the description below but really excited for this session way how's it going i'm going to add your slide to the screen hi kana uh, thank you so much uh, my pleasure to have this uh, opportunity to share you something around the graph the graph magic nebula graph Yep, and yeah, so I I will uh, give a brief uh, introduction from my side. So this is Wei from Shanghai, and I'm an open source believer. I I, I like to um, you know code around different open source com communities. I'm now the uh, developer advocate for uh, Nebula Graph. Uh, the team behind is called VSoft, and you will know why we call it VSoft later. And I used to do uh, things around OpenStack. So you can find me in in the uh, this URL, Twitter, GitHub. Uh, I will I will put today's uh, slides uh, in this URL as well. Yep. Um, yeah. So today um, I'm going to share things around uh, what is graph and uh, what is graph database and uh, some something around the project of the Nebula graph, and then I will share some um, interesting, hopefully interesting uh, use cases for the uh, graph. Database. So let's begin. So what what is a graph? I think this is not new to many of us as I know, but I want to uh, give a brief introduction. That graph come is actually uh, uh, similar to um, topology. Comes from one uh, single problem that's uh, what, like one hundred years uh, years before uh, in old uh, Europe city that there are two rivers across the city and uh, that will split the city into a different uh, piece of lands. So uh, they will have this question that how could you tr walk through, uh, traverse uh, all, uh, all the bridge um, for once and only once to you know cover uh, all of the lands? Is, it, is that possible? So the result uh, exploit is it, not possible, it's proven. But this problem can be actually abstracted as the, 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 the famous uh, you know, uh, seven bridge problem. It's actually underlying uh, just a graph uh, problem. So when we're talking graph, we can abstract those uh, things into just dot and the, the lines. So, or we call them vertex or node and edges or relationship. So what, what is graph? Graph is just, uh, um, you know, the things that we care about the nodes and the connections. So, but why do we need st uh, this thing? It's just a math problem. And uh, actually graph technology is uh, applied uh, across different industries. Uh, and we are leveraging it almost everywhere. So one of the example is like the, the search engine. So. Um, for example, when we were doing, uh, we were so, uh, searching certain uh, things, like in Google, uh, if you see, uh, search for the MCU Nebula, you, you, not only you, you saw those, uh, you know, reversed uh, uh, sorted uh, things, uh, just less elastic, we also have some cars out there. So these are things not just by sorting things. Instead, the, the, it was actually backed by things around the knowledge and the, the knowledge, you know, just like when we are thinking about something, just like our neural things in our brain. So they are in the form of network or in, in form of graph. So underlying there is something called the knowledge graph here. So uh, this is one, uh, you know, one of the interesting things that we are leveraging the magic of uh, graph. So um, then the next thing is um, why Nebula Graph, sorry, why Graph Database. So um, a Graph Database, so I will start with the definition of the Graph Database. So a Graph Database, uh, I'm quoting the Wikipedia, is a database that will use the graph structure to uh, persist the, the, the information and for query the information. So those information are actually uh, the nodes and the edges and the properties. So nodes 
uh, nodes and edges uh, are uh, we already uh, reviewed, but what, what is the property? So think of they are just like K and V, just like uh, a mango or big big table. So those information were attached to uh, in your graph uh, to the nodes and edges. So that is something we call the a, a property graph, and the graph database is just uh, one yet another graph, uh, yet another database persist information in the form of property graph. So why do we bother to create such a new thing? So just a buzzword. So uh, there are a bunch of reasons and uh, it's quite straightforward that like why we will need a time series database because we sometimes are have very heavy situations to you know, persist those time series data that isn't the best, or you cannot fulfill your requirements in, in your traditional KV or, uh, you know, relational database. So similar to graph. So we, we, we have to um, somehow uh, have a dedicated system for that. So one of the reasons is the schema. So uh, when we are trying to, you know, serialize the, the, the things in form of knowledge, um, we can represent those connections between nodes uh, in the KV or tabular uh, form. So if you're familiar with things like, uh, of the, uh, the database domain, so you will realize it's something uh, called join. So you have to create some table in the middle between the two things that we want to connect. And you make the join uh, between them. So that is doable, but not perfect or uh, we call it costly. So another thing that's um, not straightforward to persist those uh, information uh, is the query itself. So when you want to do those, we call it graph query, but you can think of you're jumping from one node to another and to another and to another. So those kind of multi hoops query or graph, graph query can be expressed with a select join, but it's, it's doable, but quite painful to me, frankly. So this is just, just a one hop jump. So, but when we're doing it in the graph database, so it can be extremely easy because it's built for that, right? So I think that the, the, the deal maker uh, um, factor that comparing between the two is the performance. So, as I mentioned, graph database uh, was designed to persist data in a graph form. So it saved uh, the data was underlying saved designed for the graph, the connections. So the result will be when you are doing uh, high throughput, big data volume, um, you know, multi uh, hops uh, graph query. The difference can uh, be significantly, uh, you know, different. Like some in some queries in graph database that will be in million uh, in MS, but uh, uh, in a tabular database that will be hours. So it's a difference between online and offline. So that will make a lot of difference. And when we are when our service rely, relies on certain query like that, so you have to use a graph database. So um, to you know. To have a more uh, sense of this difference, I I I will quote uh, this you know tech meme and this uh, this video. So this comes from a, a retro game called uh, uh, Snow Brothers. That in this old game, you are controlling the 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 Snow Brother here. You will have to attack those monsters, but they are cute, right? Uh, and you find them and kill them. Maybe just to freeze them, uh, but it's similar to uh, hopefully it's similar to the case that we were doing the graph queries on the tabular database. So you have to jump from one stage to another and seek uh, all the line run there. So that will that that's kind of uh, exhausted to me. But uh, when it comes to uh, but yeah, you can have this. Uh, fast lag, you can run faster. So that's some tricks or magics uh, or uh, technologies called index or some other optimizations on tabular database. That's helpful, but didn't 
solve the problem from the you know from the root, and that will lead uh, where data grows to a larger like ten or hundreds times of the scale. You you cannot you 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 still suffer. So what so what Graph Davis brings us is just like this green bottle. So with that. You can you can fly, so you can jump from this to another point with O1 uh, time complexity. So that will be a next level, uh, different solution. So this is another, you know, maybe it's uh, creepy, but I consider it somehow explain uh, why graph database can solve the certain situations that we care. So next, I want to give some uh, introduction on Nebula Graph. So why uh, bother create another da uh, graph database project? So uh, most of the reasons that when I was talking with other community contributors or users in our uh, open source community, so it's because of the scale and the, the performance. So Nebula Graph was designed in, in a time that the distributing system uh, has come to a, a, a time period. It's involved in a lot, so it's quite modern. So we would, from day zero, we, we designed it for the you know the distributed uh, use case for the large scale of data volume, and we. I, I every time I call this this uh, uh, I saw this first time from Twitter when we uh, have this you know this uh, big boat stacking in the big river and the, the world was stopped for a couple of months. So it's really hard to make this uh, ship uh, go uh, move on. So, but uh, when it comes to the small case, we can just, you know, two men can push it and everything was solved. So I want to, um, what I want to express here is, um, even though this uh, the problem looks similar, so but uh, scale really makes uh, differences. So you have to design whole different solution for different uh, use cases when it comes to different scale. So um, in in Nebula Graph, the the what Nebula Graph excels is uh, when it comes to a, a huge uh, data volume when your when your business grows. So Nebula Graph excels. Uh, when it's especially when it comes to uh, high uh, concurrency uh, queries. And uh, the next reason, um, so the reason uh, behind the scene is the architecture of Nebula Graph. So Nebula Graph, uh, we can consider it similar as a, just like TiDB or um, um, Google Spanners. So we uh, we are using using a, a computation and the storage uh, separate design, so you can scale uh, easily, and uh, it's a share nothing architecture. Uh, and underneath, uh, we we enable auto sharding. So and uh, it's raft based. I'm not going to dive deep uh, for details in, in this time. Uh, but uh, if you are, you know, you're interested in, in the details, feel free to find us. Uh, so we are open source and uh, you can find me in the community as well. So I can give you more um, insights on how we design, how we uh, create this uh, distributed uh, graph database. So uh, another reason that um, uh, why Nebula Graph is uh, we are open source and uh, it is uh, Apache 2.0 uh, licensed, but we we, j we didn't just put uh, source available. We have a relatively uh, active community, and uh, since we uh, started the project uh, in 2018, we have very first production uh, users in in the end of 2019. And uh, now we have uh, uh, we have the 3.0 GA from the beginning of this year, and we have like around a thousand users uh, in record that we tracked, and uh, we have a bunch of different uh, excel uh, excellent community users from different teams, and they uh, contribute back a, a bunch of different you know optimizations and uh, sweet features. So uh, yeah, our community and the landscape. Yes, uh, Nebula Graph community is 
it's a quite large community. We have a bunch of different sub projects. So, and they are also uh, open source. And uh, a lot of them were uh, contributed and driven uh, by uh, very cool community uh, com contributors. So I'm not going to uh, list everything of them, but uh, uh, if if our audience are familiar with the scenes they have the cloud native uh, thing, that we are uh, listed in the cloud native scenes uh, uh, they have uh, uh, landscape. I didn't uh, add it in this slides. Uh, and we have a uh, different cloud native related uh, projects as well. For example, Kubernetes operator. So feel free to check out. And um, yep. And finally, I want to um, uh, use the most of the time to have have you make you more sense of the you know graph database use cases, which I consider quite interesting. So uh, one of the uh, first thing I want to show is I code it from one of our user Meituan, which is a you know a Chinese version of the Yelp. And uh, they were putting Nebula Graph on their uh, service on more than 50 uh, different use cases. So this is the one of the uh, uh, interesting one that they were uh, making a smart you know chat um, uh, agent just like the, the the you know the chat GPT. But uh, not that smart. So, uh, but with with the uh, Nebula graph and the graph uh, uh, knowledge graph uh, in backend, you can easily create uh, such thing. For example, you want to ask if there are any McDonald's uh, nearby the street um, food bar. Uh, it will help you grasp uh, in seconds, uh, instantly. And another another uh, one I, I like to share is. Um, the reasoning, the explanation of a recommendation system. Uh, so in their share, uh, uh, so in their app, you, if you search, uh, you know, which restaurant I, I should go for uh, this lunch. Um, so the recommendation system could be quite uh, complex, right? But uh, with the graph, you can provide a, a reasoning for every item of your uh, recommendations. For example, uh, with the graph, you can have uh, those from Beijing enjoy the, uh, the Korean cuisine, said this rat restaurant is great. So these uh, underneath, they are just connecting dots in the whole graph. So I will give you a more detailed demo later on this scenario, actually. And, and it's open source as well, if you're interested in that. So uh, graph is actually leveraged in, in many, many different cases. Uh, for example, social network, uh, risk control, uh, et cetera. So I will give you some more details. Uh, um, uh, some of them are actually toy projects I, I created as a, you know, for learning purpose. So I will uh, give you some uh, more details uh, now. Uh, the first one is the uh, knowledge base uh, QA system. So, just that as the one of the Yelp one. So, for example, uh, if you are uh, in in the hospital app, so you want to know uh, if what if I eat something when I have some uh, symptoms. So, some some food is good for your health when it has some issues. And uh, for example, in the social network, who are my uh, mutual friend, my three degree friends? Uh, could you recommend some friends to me? So I create a, a, a project called Siri. So you're not hearing wrong. So it's just a, a, a end to end uh, solution, open source toy project to help you, you know, do something uh, just like this. So you can query, uh, ask any questions, and it will underneath calling the graph database for you. For example, uh, it support audio, but I will read the text. So uh, how does Team Duncan and Lakers connect it? How did they connect it? So it will help you um, grasp from the graph uh, database and I give you answer. Um, and uh, for example, um, uh, if you want to uh, query, uh, so this is this is another example on the social network. Uh, for example, if you want to get all the closest friend of certain user to like 
you know, push it to users. So those are your best friends. Maybe you, you should say hi to them, right? You can make this query. So this query is just to help you to find, for example, this is the, uh, the user, find his user, uh, his friends. So uh, his friends' friends who are also his direct friends. And that means um, this friends have some mutual friends with um, Tim Duncan. So this is the one that I want to query. And uh, this query will actually sorting how many the mutual friends each of his direct friends has and sorted by this number of mutual friends. So that will give us a closeness of this given friends. So this is just a very simple uh, use case in the social network. And you can find on my uh, blog that I just posted uh, last week, uh, how we, we could leverage the graph magic to do a lot of different uh, other kind of queries and even uh, uh, virtual uh, insights uh, when we are grasping the, the in social network. So this is a social network. Oh yeah, just like this. So Tim Duncan, and uh, these are, all, for example, Tony Parker have many mutual friends with Tim Duncan. And you can see, oh, this is Tony Parker. So they, they have some mutual friends here, all around here. So, and that's why uh, he is, we consider he is the most, you know, close friends with uh, Tim Duncan. Yeah. So the, the graph explains everything. So it's, it's easier for our brain to understand, you know, the information. Uh, rather than other form of information. So yeah, this is the project's code. You can find it here. And uh, uh, this is the architecture of this you know, uh, QA system. So in, in the front end, I'm using the speech API. So you can uh, speak and he will understand. And uh, in the back end, I'm, I'm creating different uh, components in different uh, blocks. So Classifier will help you, it will, uh, you know, Pro, uh, detect your intent and uh, processing your semantic to you know fill in different uh, slots to know uh, which kind of question you are asking you're referring to and then when you when this uh, backhand classifier know what uh, you are going to ask it will make your query uh, ask uh, your, your question in, into a graph query and then finally it will query the well, database, and uh, when we have the result, it will uh, construct your answer into a sentence and back send back it to user. So this is a typical uh, architecture of the application with the graph database. So I will introduce you uh, mo many more of them later, but not in this detail. If you're interested, just check my uh, uh, source code here. And uh, yep, not going to so. Uh, regarding of recommendation system, so Graph can help a lot here as well. So I uh, there I wrote a, a, a post uh, in this URL as well, and I'll also uh, provide all example in a runnable playground, so you can set up your own one and uh, check all the methods, at least a lot of them. So here I will give you one of the example. So this is one type of uh, recommendation system that will. Uh, you know, suggest you uh, maybe you should watch this movie. So imagine we are set, we are running the Netflix, something like that, but smaller, right? Of course. Uh, for example, we want to recommend the uh, movies to the user with use, uh, ID of user two. So we will firstly this uh, this is only one type of approach. Uh, find the historical uh, movies that he watched, yet with a higher uh, ranking. And then we will, from starting from that those uh, movies, we will find uh, all other users who also watched those movies with uh, also higher uh, ranking, and we somehow consider those uh, users um, are more likely have shared the same interest with the, our candidate user. So we mark those common users in in green, and then we start from them to next to check all the movies that they have watched and also with a higher um, you know, ranking, but not yet being uh, watched by uh, this user. So that will be our final uh, recommendation results, candidates. 
And uh, this is the uh, query that's uh, doing so. So I'm not going to dive deep, but if you are interested in, in that, you can check my uh, blog uh, on this. Uh, this is only one of the example. So before I continue to the uh, next uh, use case, so this is another uh, recommendation system case that, as I said, you can have a natural explanation or reasoning of given uh, rec recommendation. For example, if we recommend this uh, Star Wars, the Empire uh, Strikes Back to user one, two, four, so we can give him why we do we were doing so. So we just do a find path query. So this is just a graph query to find a path, all the uh, no loop path between the two nodes. So we can see this is the, the path between them. So from this path, we can get information like, oh, uh, we recommend this movie to you because you used to like uh, the movie Star Wars. So there's another Star Wars. And uh, because this Star Wars, of course, is, shares a lot of uh, same categories and same crews, uh, you know, in the movie between the, uh, you know, the recommended one. Of course, because they are in one series, right? So this is quite uh, interesting uh, use case uh, in this domain as well. And another one uh, typical use case is called fraud detection. So this happens in like any um, you know user um, content generation uh, websites, and uh, like other cases like the fintech uh, services. So this is a, a, a form or schema of a graph. Uh, demonstrating that, uh, so if we are running a fintech company, we are making loans to our users and users can um, apply for the loan. Um, but some of the users are not, you know, the natural users. They are uh, some bad guys out there. So how do we uh, pick, uh, prevent them from, uh, you know, application, uh, sending the application for loans? So we can, what we can do is leveraging the graph. So this is only one of the pattern that's showing this certain new requirements are, you know, with a high risk because we can just do a query in our graph to know that this user were, you know, using a device or somehow connected with other users or somehow connected with a Wi-Fi or IP. That's in the in history they they were hold a lot of other applications. So, or some other applications are marked as black. So in that case, you can easily block these applications on, uh, online instead of waiting for a couple of hours or days. So you can, you know, prevent it in real time. And this is the, actually the, the query we make to have this thing rendered. And uh, there are a bunch of different other related uh, patterns or math method. For example, you can run the GNN, which is a graph neural network, which is uh, you know quite uh, performant uh, modern uh, machine learning method. And they are, they can all be run on uh, network graph as well. And I have a full um, arch uh, full uh, post here. So if you're interesting, so check out. And uh, the code are also open source. So this is another use case called data lineage. So what is data lineage or data governance? So uh, I will show you in, in, in this video. So this is a system that is doing the data um, lineage thing that, oops, net, okay, the network. So I'm not going to uh, play this video, uh, but uh, show you in this graph. Uh, so. Data lineage is a is a, a function that we are kind of manage or tracking how data database data where room and different column how and how they are connected how they are dependent of each other and how they are uh, leveraged by certain users or services. So imagine you have like ten of different data tables and different uh, data pipelines and different applications and a, a bunch of different teams you you uh, and you use your data to generate a new table so they could all be 
uh, dependent each other in a, you know in a mass way. So every time you want to make change, so I want to clean up something, I want to create a new data depending on certain things. How should you, uh, could you know that you can do that or you can delete it uh, or you just ask things to find out the information in a quite huge uh, mail list or in your Slack group. So that's, that's not elegant or engineer way, right? You, you should somehow manage it in a proper way. So that's where the data lineage or data governance system comes in. So basically leverage uh, graph database, you can have this in, in a quite um, easy way and uh, you can have everything controlled in a, in a qualified um, engineering uh, a way of managing uh, the data. So, oops, the, there are some, okay, the video cannot be played, but you can refer everything from my um, uh, blog post. I'm giving a whole reference of the uh, data stack where the data lineage is one of the uh, them, uh, and they are all open source. Uh, it's a quite uh, interesting uh, uh, use case, I, I would say. Uh, so I will give this uh, example. So uh, actually, when we are seeing if this table is, you know, have three uh, hoop lineage, and if this table uh, has a, have a, a schema of or uh, or uh, have a, a cluster relationship or have a, um, generated by uh, or uh, uh, there is another uh, dashboard relying on this table. All these kind of relationships can be queried just uh, with one query. So this single query will help you in 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 a data linear system to have a whole view. Um, a whole control of given uh, data uh, component in your data warehouse, your lab. Uh, and just in this single query, if you are, we are persist them in, in a tabular database, that will introduce you more than 10 uh, joins. But uh, in a graph database, that will be easier, easily to be done uh, in, in, in just one query uh, in no time. So oh, this video works. So for example, I query this, you, you can see that the result will be shown just uh, like in less than uh, uh, hundreds of, um, of, of MS. So it's, it's extremely uh, fast. And that's why uh, you need a Nebula graph or, or graph database in, in this case. So the one that I show you, uh, this, this is not a toy project. It's called the uh, Amazon. It's an open source project under uh, Linux Foundation. So. Uh, Nebula Graph support of this project is still work in progress, and I'm the contributor of this uh, this feature. So if you're interested, just uh, check out this uh, RFC uh, link for that. So another use case is the blockchain. So it's quite straightforward that blockchain is actually a network or a graph, but uh, graph graph chain is not just a you know one dimension uh, chain or link itself. Actually. A lot of different components inside uh, every block are connected to uh, some other thing. So it's quite, it's actually a quite uh, crossed, you know, well crossed structured uh, graph. And uh, when we put one or more blockchains, so sometimes you need to correlate certain wa uh, uh, wallet or certain users across different chains. So. Uh, Ethereum or, or uh, other um, chains. So maybe one user can have different, you know, exchanges between them. So with the graph database, you can easy to figure out those insights and just like so. And I actually create a project uh, to help you extract the the Chia. This is one of the blockchain that not leveraging the CPU, but uh, it will, you know, do the proof of, of work from storage. So in very interesting project. So I was doing doing a tour to help you inject the whole graph, the whole chain of the Chia into Never Graph. So you can play with, with it. It's a quite interesting uh, one. Uh, the next one is called the entity resolution or ID mapping. So in this use case, imagine you have a bunch of different user system in, in your company, or you just acquire another company 
and they have a user system, but you want to leverage all the information, like you want to correlate each user, but in different system, or you can correlate one single user, but create different users in your system. So how could we do that? So you, it's actually a quite popular topic uh, for now, uh, but with the graph database, you can, for example, you, you, you persist different uh, like device information, email information, IP, phone, in this graph. And with some query like this, you can, um, you know, for example, you want to check all the users with similar or same prefix of the same handle of the um, email part. And uh, you also have their uh, address information. So Nebula Graph can persist the geo, uh, geospatial, geospatial. So you can calculate the distance between the you know, the uh, address. So with that, you can uh, find the you know in high uh, likelihood uh, some of the user are actually the same one. For example, here these two user has same uh, email prefix. And yet, they leave uh, their stress are quite close or even similar. So uh, this is a simple uh, example. I actually composed a long uh, post on different approaches with the Nebula Graph or Graph technology, including the GNN, to help you do this task. It's quite an interesting topic. And finally, this is some something called shareholding relationship analysis. So for example, you want to find who is actually control certain cooperation in, in, in the sense of the hair show, uh, uh, the whole share. For example, person can hold share another cooperation and they can work at some certain roles in, in the cooperation and the cooperation can hold another uh, share, uh, another cooperation share. So if you put everything in, in, in graph database, you can find them in, in single query. For example, in, in this query, you can find all the related cooperation or persons, key persons in given certain person or cer certain uh, cooperation. And I create this data set and uh, uh, projects. So it's open source here. Uh, so this is demo. Like uh, if you are, um, given the system uh, ID of the cooperation here, and it will help you, it will help you generate all the analysis graph uh, for you and the, all the code and the, everything is open sourced uh, in, in this repo. So if you are interested in this uh, small project. And the final one is the one that I shared in the, in the beginning of this week that I tried to leverage uh, you know the the chat GPT to help you to help me to you know grasp data from the Wikipedia of the you know the FIFA 2022 Qatar uh, all the games uh, all, all, all the teams and all the players and I make them into a graph in Neville Graph and with that I I make a simple uh, maybe silly but kind of makes sense predict of the FIFA uh, World Cup. So actually, I will, uh, I will demo you late, later on this one. I have the environment uh, set up. So um, basically, I uh, make all the data in the player. Player was, uh, belongs to a team. And team was grouping in a group. And the, uh, the, the player will serve in a, uh, in a club. And there are some information like the, the caps of the player and uh, the age and the goals. Uh, how many goals he uh, had, you know, get. So, and finally, I make the this prediction of uh, the team that I consider in, in the best chance to win the final uh, game. So I will demo you real, really quick. So uh, let's see, I'm going to use this query. So this query, how I get this query, I just... Uh, uh, doing with the uh, virtual builder. So I want to query all the relationships between any type of nodes. So uh, with that, I will write this query, right? And then uh, I want to add some um, conditions. I want to filter only those uh, with goals more than 10. And also together with this condition, which is 
um, in average, uh, they should he should have goals at least zero point two in per every uh, match. So uh, uh, with that, uh, let's do this query. Uh, with this query, ba -ba -ba, here, yes, we got all the, you know, all the, those um, ones who have fulfilled this criteria, right? And then we want to get all their teams. Uh, we want to expand. Uh, we want to only care about the belong to relationship in one hoop in the outgoing direction. Okay, we got the whole graph we want now. And then we will leverage one of the uh, uh, node importance algorithm called betweenness centrality here. And we, when we run them, we will help you to calculate with the literation on the overall graph that we just carried. And uh, we will you, you will notice the size of the nodes will change because of the betweenness centrality value varies in this iteration. So finally, we can see the, the single node with the highest uh, between its centrality value after this algorithm was, uh, uh, was Brazil. So you can uh, see from the, from the graph. And uh, I will show you more. So you can see this is the whole graph that I filtered. And uh, in this prediction, uh, Brazil is the, the winner. So let's see in, in like two weeks uh, if I make the right prediction. So I give a full uh, more process, everything, and including the uh, the chat GPT, how I let chat GPT help you to grasp without, I, I don't have to code to help, help me uh, grasp uh, thing. So it's a very interesting post. So feel free to check this if you are interested in that. And uh, yeah, our uh, final prediction is Brazil, let's see. And uh, yeah, uh, let's do re recap. So graph is, is about vertex and edges. And remember our team is named VSoft. So V stands for vertex, E uh, stands for edges. And the Nebula graph is a linear scalable performant um, open source distributed project. And uh, it comes with a strong open source community. And uh, we already know uh, Nebula Graph and Graph Database can do a lot of different cool things. Uh, so if you are interested, uh, feel free to uh, check out our repository, our uh, community. So, uh, the, uh, uh, sorry. So uh, this is our uh, repository. Feel free to mark uh, start. And uh, you can join our community uh, in Slack um, and uh, Google uh, GitHub discussions. So, and that's, that's all from my side. Uh, yep. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot for sharing me. And, uh... For folks who want, I just have one question. For folks who want to make, get involved with Nebula Graph, can maybe direct them to some resources or something? Oh yeah. So uh, one of the things I, I highlight uh, is to uh, join uh, our Slack channel, as I mentioned. And uh, another thing is uh, you can go to also go to my uh, website. I have an English version, and I recently just uh, post a. Uh, um, Post a, a, a blog on how we uh, how how we best contribute to 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 the community, and let me think. Uh, oh, they, yeah, this is the contribution uh, guide, and uh, maybe also feel free to uh, reach out to uh, Stack Overflow. Uh, on the Nebula Graph and Graph Database tag, and that will help you find a lot of uh, uh, different, uh, you know, previous questions. And uh, maybe also check out our uh, YouTube uh, channels. And uh, we have uh, a bunch of different, um, you know, sharings out there. And maybe join our community uh, meetings. Uh, if you 
uh, if you see in this calendar and the meetup, you will have our community meetings and we will invite some community members or a lot, uh, like some, uh, some graph uh, masters to have some uh, topics being shared. And yeah, I think that's things I will recommend to go for. Now. Amazing. And uh, all the resources that we have shared, you know, how to get involved and everything, how to contribute to the project, all of these I will link in the description below because you all keep asking us, you know, how to get to cyber open source, what are some of the good projects to contribute to. And we, this is like the, I think, just the second time I've spoken about, you know, we've uh, discussed about with the guest on, uh, uh, like, I, I did a video on, on like graphs before, but uh, for this one, I think it's the first time we had like a guest over share a little bit more about the use cases and some of the projects. So uh, definitely something new that we had, we had done on the channel and something for you all to explore. And if you have any questions, I'll leave the links uh, you know in the description below. You can join the community. You can ask your questions over there. And uh, once again, thanks a lot, Vey, for the amazing presentation. Really appreciate you giving the time. And I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.